Hey everybody, this is Dean from Motion Media, and uh, today we're going to take a look at making a photorealistic rendering of uh, a planet, and uh, which you can use for any planet. In this case, we're going to use Earth since it's the most identifiable and uh, easiest to find high-res resources for. And uh, so we're going to break down this rendering and, and in the process look at uh, uh, look at some techniques for doing this. Um, this is a overall pretty quick render. You can see 32 seconds uh, with all the goodies on. It's probably going to be a minute. And uh, this won't work for every situation, but certainly from a longer shot from space, this works really, really well. Um, I'm going to include some links at the bottom of the post uh, to two places where you can obtain high-res uh, images of many things besides just Earth. Um, one is the um, NASA gallery, which if you come down and click on Blue Marble, um, you can see they have a whole section devoted to just planet Earth and everything is very high-res. And uh, then this is one most people are familiar with, and it's a great resource for many reasons, but it has uh, many texture maps of Earth, uh, clouds, bump maps, basically everything you can need. You see it all labeled here. Okay, so uh, this is a final render, and um, we only have three materials in the scene. We have our planet, we have our clouds, and we have a thin layer of atmosphere. And we're going to go through each one and take a look, as well as our V-Ray settings. So for the moment, Let's just look on a simple level at what we're doing. So I've created three spheres, and I'm going to zoom in here really close. So this is my Earth, and you can see that it is a radius of 100. And let's just go into ob Object Properties. You can see that it casts and receives shadows. Next is our cloud layer which you can see is a radius of 100.1 so it's just barely off the surface of the planet and if we go to properties you can see it also casts and receives shadows then this one which is at 105 uh, so a little bit further off the surface this is our atmosphere and if we go here you can see that it receives shadows but does not cast shadows all right. So all of those are are just uh, a little uh, one size uh, beyond the other. I'm going to put the atmosphere in box mode for a moment so that we can see through it. And then um, let's take another look here. Uh, you can see the result here when we zoom into our cloud layer. What we end up getting are these shadows on the surface of the planet and you can adjust that if you need more shadows or you want to enhance that effect you can uh, uh, make the cloud layer um, a bit larger in diameter however if you study some of these photographs uh, you realize it it appears to be very very close to the surface uh, the other thing that you notice about any actual photographs from space uh, versus the um, renders is that most photographs from space have way more cloud cover and just about every reference I found um, you can see here you can't even it's hard to make out that that's even Africa um, but there's always a tremendous amount of cloud cover so I realize people sometimes really want to make it clear that you're actually looking at the planet but I think you get a much more realistic result if you have a very thick cloud layer there this one's I would say light on clouds Okay, so let's work backwards for a moment, and let's um, let's hide everything except the planet Earth, and let's rebuild this shader real quick. Okay, so this looks pretty simple, um, but let's work it up, and then uh, you'll see what what we're actually doing here. So we're going to start with the V-Ray material. And I'm just going to leave that name the same. So we're going to add, obviously, our diffuse layer. That's the first step. So I'm going to go here. And we'll grab our Earth image. 
Again, I downloaded these off of the uh, two various sites there. And let's just apply this. So let's just add the one diffuse piece here and do, uh, we're going to use this original image to compare against. Let's hit render. So we've removed the um, uh, clouds and we've removed the atmosphere. And you can see looks pretty flat and uninteresting. So most of this is very straightforward. We add the bump map, which again I got off these sites. Bump. And in this case, um, you know, it's always a good idea here. If I just leave it at 30, we do an image, you know, it's just way too much. Uh, from space, you know, at these angles, it would be very difficult to see any of this. So <clears throat> I set it for something a lot less, in this case, 1. There's also always some reflectivity from the sun on the ocean depending on where the earth is being photographed. In our case we are getting highlights. So let's let's build that up. So we're going to use a specular map here. And so let's just see what that gives us. So pretty much what we thought. It's reflecting the um, black. Okay, Obviously that's wrong. And uh, what we did here is we did a mixture. So what I did was I set the reflectivity to black and we locked up all these. Uh, but then I gave it a value of 6 here and you see that obviously starts to blur the reflection. However, it's still way too intense. And so when we bring this down, let's render again. You see now we get a nice mixture, and we're getting what we wanted, which is this area of uh, the sun basically reflecting onto the ocean. Okay, so one last thing here. If you notice in any of the photographs, which I'm going to bring that up again, that um, there's always this gradient of the blue. So it seems uh, darkest blue in the center goes out to a lighter blue to the edges. And you can see in our base map, or if we look at our render, we don't we have that a little, but there's not much of a, a change between this blue and the blue at the edges. So what I did to, to resolve that is create a, a composite map and then plugged in my own um, color for the ocean. So let's do that. So first step is I'm going to mask this with my specular layer. Uh, specular? Okay. And you can see what happens. Now it's it's masking out the uh, land, so let's just invert that mask, okay? So now we have the uh, just the oceans. So now we're going to take this mask, you know, I should rename that. So we'll call this Earth Land. <coughs> now we're going to convert this mask to a composite. So what we're doing, like in Photoshop, is we're layering these two maps. So I'm going to take this one and copy it. We'll call this Earth Water. We'll invert the mask. And then we're going to replace this with a fall off. Okay. And, uh, oops, get rid of that map. And we'll put a darker blue water color for the outside, excuse me, for the inside. Something like that. And then falling off to a lighter blue, which uh, you know, you can uh, figure out based on what your rendering is what works best. Let's see what I did here. Looks like I'm pretty close, yeah. It looks like I've got more of a teal going on instead of a purple. And 41. 41. Okay. Alright. So. 
if we re-render that, you see now we're going to get our specularity as well as a nice gradient of uh, ocean blue uh, with a more intense blue in the center falling off to a lighter blue on the outside. Okay. And, that, uh, and again, these values can be changed according to uh, you know what your specific need is, but gives you control over the water, which is kind of the uh, hardest part of uh, this particular rendering. Okay, so let's unhide the cloud layer. Let's do that next. This is obviously very simple. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to rebuild it. Diffuse layer is white. And in this case, I'm using my cloud map. Uh, and let's just show what happens here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn off this mask for just a second. Okay, so I'm using the cloud map as the diffuse and as the opacity. So if we render, <coughs> that does two things, obviously. One is we um, get the cloud colors and uh, the transparency, as you can see here. And then, of course, it gives us the shadows. Okay. Now, some of this <coughs> uh, gets a little strange in the rendering. So I add one more step to this where I mask the opacity map with a falloff, which reduces the strength of the clouds at the edges. So if I turn that back on, and we watch the edges here, you can see what it's doing. It's reducing that cloud intensity from the edge which uh, will help us uh, make a more believable atmosphere as well. And it just makes the rendering a little smoother around the edges. Okay. So that's our cloud layer. And now we will unhide our atmosphere. The atmosphere layer is nothing more than, let's turn off the opacity, is nothing more than a color gradient that, uh, again, is um, colors I snatched from photographs of uh, atmosphere going from a light, uh, excuse me, a regular blue to kind of a lighter blue to the outside, and then we're creating an opacity map to force that just to the edges. And uh, if we look here, you can see this is really the p the area that we're dealing with right in here at the edge, and our opacity map matches that in fall off. So if we render, you see it not only. Uh, adds a nice thin layer of atmosphere, but it also desaturates and uh, gives a little bit more depth to the center as well. And you can see as it falls off to the edges, it actually has a very realistic look there. Okay. All right, now <clears throat> let's just look for a minute at what we did with the lighting, because there's a few ways to do this. Okay. All right. So we have that. So let's close out of here. So let's turn on our lights and cameras for a moment. So anyone who's watched any of my videos knows I've done lots of stuff about how to set V-Ray up with gamma control, but just to touch on it, gamma is on, 2.2, everything's turned on, our output's at 1. Inside V-Ray, Again, uh, linear workflow, everything is how it usually is, and this is really the most important part, which is don't affect colors. Um, everything else is set to the same. Now, based on that, <coughs> I did make some changes to the sun element in V-Ray, and this is the change that I made right here, is this blue. So, the default is white. This is a new feature for V-Ray Sun. Um, Everything else is set as normal, but if I if I have that filter color set to one and I hit render, you'll see what happens. It tints it far warmer, obviously. And so you have two choices here. You can either uh, use it naturally like this, and then in post do some color correction, or as I did, and you can see the difference here. You can interject some blue. Um, to offset that warming agent, and I probably have it set too high. This is something a little more realistic here, so that we still get a little little fall off there. Simulate some global warming. 
Okay, so all of this looks pretty natural. And if we even just take a look at turning off the sun and using a max direct light, if I turn this on, I'm using V-Ray shadows. You see I have to use a multiplier of 35, quite large. And if we render, we basically will get a very similar result to uh, the V-Ray sun with that blue tint to it. So you can use a max light if you'd like. Uh, you just have to remember that if you're using the V-Ray camera and the various uh, gamma settings that you're going to have to set it to a pretty high level there. All right. Okay, so that is it. That is how you make a photorealistic Earth using V-Ray and Max. We'll talk to you guys again soon.